혹시 부탄에서 오신 방가 씨 아닌가요? 부탄에서 왔습니다. 방가입니다. 부탄! A country with the highest happiness index. A small country east of the Himalayas, the kingdom of Bhutan. Today's guest is chairman of the Korea Bhutan Friendship Association, William Lee, who hails from the Happy Bhutan. He will tell us about the various promotions underway to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the establishment of Korea Bhutan diplomatic relations, and also talk about the holidays in Bhutan on our special Chuseok episode of Heart to Heart. Today we're joined with Chairman of the Korea Bhutan Friendship Association, William Lee. Uh, welcome to the studio and thank you for joining us today. Uh, before we begin our talk, would you like to say hello to our viewers that are watching? Well, it's my honor to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Um, uh, hello, uh, my name is William Lee. I'm here to represent the very beautiful country in the eastern Himalaya uh, named uh, Bhutan, also known as the happy country. Okay. Yeah, beautiful country and yeah, a happy country. Now, for those that are not familiar with Bhutan, could you tell us, the, you know, some general information about the country? What kind of country is Bhutan? Sure. Uh, it is a small country uh, in the uh, eastern Himalayan region, mm -hmm. and it's uh, sandwiched uh, between the two major countries, uh, China to the north, mm. India to the south. And Bhutan is a small country with a population of less than a million population. Actually, we have less than uh, 800,000 oh. population, mm -hmm. which is smaller than like one of the strict district in, in, in Seoul, mm -hmm. um, but with a strong um, pride to yes. the country. Uh -huh. And we have our own language, our own uh, customs, architecture, which mm -hmm. is totally different from the other Himalayan countries like Nepal, India, or Tibet. Mm -hmm. So which makes the unique, uh, which makes Bhutan unique is also its uh, gross national happiness that the, um, our, uh, His Majesty, the fourth king of Bhutan, uh -huh. has established, established in 1970s mm -hmm. uh, to make people happier. Yes. Now, we did talk a bit about Bhutan and, um, you know, the beauties of Bhutan, mm -hmm. but there are some things that people are not familiar with. And we have a list of um, some questions or, I guess, things that may be true or false. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if you could answer uh, O for oh, true. Okay. So I'm going to hand this to you. And X for false. Okay, I'll do my best. Okay, so... So we've got five. Let's start with number one. Here we go. Cattle in Bhutan die mainly of old age. I'll say O. Oh. oh, that's right. Um, yes. Uh -huh. uh, like I said, um, the Bhutan is a Buddhist country. Mm -hmm. Not only because of that, people, we do value the lives of all sentient beings, mm -hmm. including animals, uh, insects, um, and the uh, trees, and so therefore, we do not have any slaughterhouse mm -hmm. uh, in Bhutan. Mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't mean that we are all vegetarians. Uh, we do import meats from other countries like India mm -hmm. or Thailand. Um, but yeah, all those like cows and um, pigs and chickens, mm -hmm. and they live until they die. Paradise so, for paradise them. Paradise for them, <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, they die mainly of the old age, okay. and sometimes we bury them, uh, oh. just like our family members. So, wow. so that's, which also makes Bhutan special mm -hmm. uh, place. Okay, so that's an O, oh, true for number one. Let's check out number two. Bhutan limits the number of tourists admitted into the country every year. Mm -hmm. Is this true or false? I would say true and false okay. altogether. Mm -hmm. um, well, you, well, there are a lot of rumors that, you know, the yeah, Bhutan limits some the number of tourists mm -hmm. uh, by countries and or by the number of you know, country, from the regions. And ah. But these days, um, as long as you follow up with the um, tourism policy mm -hmm. of Bhutan, then there's no limit for a uh, number of visitors um, per year. Okay. So, but however, uh, before uh, we did limit the number of tourists to keep this our um, tourism policy mm -hmm. high value, low impact. Okay. Um, so it's also both true and false. So it's true for in the past, but at the mm. present, currently, right the then, answer we do not have. would true. be X, false. So 
let's move on to number three. There are no traffic lights in Bhutan. I think I may know the answer to this. Oh, really? Well, can you oh. guess? <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. yeah, pretty much it is the only country in the world um, that has no traffic lights. Mm -hmm. um, because also we do not have a high, uh, highways. Mm. Um, and in the most busy street in Timpu, uh -huh. uh, also there are no uh, traffic lights. So people, we, you know, we respect each other. Mm -hmm. um, not, not because there are many cars in Bhutan, like a big cities like Timpu, mm -hmm. there are, now they have a traffic jam, rush hours. But still, somehow we still manage uh -huh. not to have any car accidents. I see. Yet. So okay. yes, we, there are no traffic lights in Bhutan. Wonderful. I wish we didn't have uh, I wish we didn't need any traffic lights here yeah, in Seoul. Yeah, there's a chaos in Seoul. There's <laughs> yeah. chaos. Okay, now moving on to number four. Bhutan is a matriarchal society. Daughters inherit property and the husband moves into the wife's house. Interesting. Hmm, interesting. Uh -huh. Yes, I would say also true and false. Okay. Um, because um, it's not only because, it's not because Bhutan, uh, also in the Himalayan regions like Tibet mm -hmm. or the northern India, like uh, Ladakh or Sikkim, it was their uh, kind of culture um, to have the daughter, the first daughter as the main uh, mm -hmm. household, head uh -huh. of household. Uh -huh. So still in Bhutan, in those like villages, Still, they're like like uh, one wife and there are many husbands. Oh, so they do so, carry on the tradition in, in yeah, some Yeah, I mean, how would you, you know, how would you feel like if you live in a, such a such a uh, village? You can have as many husbands as you can. <laughs> Not or, sure if I would. Ooh, yeah, well, I'll be happy with one. Yeah, one is already a <laughs> headache. One's so. enough, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so in the villages, they are still following this tradition. Mm -hmm. But in the major big cities like Timpu or Baro or Panaka, uh -huh. um, and as we have more centralized, I mean, the Western culture came in, and, mm -hmm. and now in the cities, uh, people, um, they do the one-to-one -one, uh, oh, marriage. And, but still, um, the boys tend to um, go to the, um, the wife's house. Ooh. And somehow the women are more stronger than men in Bhutan. Somehow. Okay, yeah, so, they seem to have more power. Right, when you visit like uh, all the hotels, all uh -huh. those like uh, concierge or those like bare boys, bare girls, I would say, uh -huh. they are female. Oh, I see. So then that's true and false. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd say the more power, the more responsibility. It is correct. Right? Yeah. Yes, more responsibilities. Okay, let's move on to our final number five question. Bhutan is a monarchy ruled by a king. Mm -hmm. The answer is a force. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. um, the Bhutan used to be a monarch country uh -huh. uh, since 1907, um, um, but the, uh, the uh, visionary king, the fourth mm -hmm. king of Bhutan, His Majesty uh, Jingmi Sengye Wangchuk, mm -hmm. he, won, he believed in the democracy so much and it is the only country in the world, in the history of uh, human politics, mm -hmm. it is the only country in the world that hand over the power by the ruler to the people. So Bhutan is now a constitutional monarchy country, mm -hmm. um, just like Japan or uh, UK. Um, there are kings, but they don't rule. Mm, um, I see. So in 2008, uh, Bhutan had a very first election. Mm -hmm. So now that we have a prime minister, Yes. And there are members of parliaments from each region. Mm -hmm. So it's a totally democratic country right now. Um, but we do still have a king. Um, and the fourth king hand over the power to our current king, His Majesty the Fifth Dragon King I see. at the moment. So with the royal family are very much loved by the people. Mm -hmm. And the um, people are enjoying the democracy. I see. This is very interesting. So, how, how did you like the uh, true or false questions? Or? Lovely. I wish we could have a more list. So we can <laughs> I go wish over, we did. But, yeah. Okay. Now we're going to um, wrap up this session and then move on to uh, more questions. So we'll continue our talk in just a bit. Yes. There is a small country at the foot of the Himalayas where everyone is happy. Bhutan, the country with the highest happiness index in the world. People here do not measure their happiness with material wealth. A 
Unlike other countries that seek happiness through economic development, Bhutan preserves its ancient culture amid its unspoiled nature. Just as their ancestors had done so many years ago, they find happiness in life's small things. I understand that 90% of the Bhutanese people have reported that they are very happy, they're living happy lives. Mm -hmm. So what makes uh, Bhutanese people live such happy lives? Mm -hmm. How can they well, be so happy? Yeah, are you happy now? I think I am, oh, but yes. I think I could be happier. When you're in Bhutan, you'll be more happier. <laughs> Actually, 97% of Bhutanese people answer they are happy mm -hmm. uh, by the research. But those are the numbers that are not really important. Of course, uh, Bhutan is not like, like an utopia. Mm. It's not a paradise. We do have our own problems also. But we, we've been promoting the value of happiness. The uh, concept of happiness was driven from the founder of Bhutan. In 1629, mm -hmm. the founder of the country is named Shaptung Nong Namgyal. Uh, he said that yeah, if the government cannot make people happier, then there's no purpose for the government to exist. Mm. So from that statement, the, all the leaders in Bhutan then stick to that statement to make people happier. And the fourth king of Bhutan, His Majesty the fourth king, was thinking, then how can I make people happy? Uh -huh. people, you know, being happy is very conditional mm -hmm. um, value. And some, things, some people make happy, some people they're not happy, no matter how much they have, no matter what kind of conditions they have. So oftentimes people confuse with the happiness itself mm -hmm. and the condition of happiness. Yeah. That we are talking about this happiness itself. So that's how um, the fourth king uh, brought the uh, idea of gross national happiness. In order to do so, like Bhutan government, uh, despite of being uh, one of the um, poorest countries in the world, but we do provide free medical service to all people. And we do provide the free education up to college, up to even PhDs, even the overseas, if the students are qualified to wow. do so. And the central monastic body, they are taking care of people's spiritual path. Not only because of the religious way, mm -hmm. but also uh, the Buddhism in Bhutan is a culture itself. Um, so they are, the happiness, the being happy, is like, a, like a learning a foreign language mm -hmm. or like a learning a new instrument. Uh -huh. So you have to train your happiness, I like see. going to the gym. Oh. And the Bhutan has been shown how to do it, how to train, how to tame your monkey mm -hmm. mind um, in order to become happy. Mm -hmm. So that's how uh, the happiness is the main key. Mm -hmm. It's very true, mm, very true. Uh, now, Bhutan is considered a magical country as well, um, a country where the people are very happy, but it's also known to be a very magical country. So uh, what are some must visit places in Bhutan for those that are interested in going? Mm -hmm. um, could you tell us about some must visit locations, must visit uh, places? Mm -hmm. Well, the entire country is a must visit place. <laughs> the single country is a must visit place, but uh -huh. um, given the uh, limited time for the tourist or mm -hmm. like, uh, foreigners to have time in Bhutan, I would suggest like three, four uh, major towns, major villages mm -hmm. that we, you need to visit. The first the capital city uh, named Timpu, mm -hmm. uh, where we have all the government complex, the royal palace, um, all the central uh, monastic body is settled. So it's a beautiful city uh, with a nice view, nice hill. And there's a place called the Buddha Point. Mm -hmm. Uh, which we have one of the biggest uh, Buddha statues in the world, oh, wow. uh, looking over the valley of Timpu uh, <gasps> from the, up on the top of the hill. Mm -hmm. And right now, our the um, let's say Pope, our uh, supreme patriarch of Bhutan Buddhism, uh, we name him Jack Kempo. Uh -huh. His Holiness Jack Kempo is giving a transmission of the uh, Tripitaka, mm. um, the entire Buddha's teaching for three months 
uh, up in the here, the Buddha Point. That's amazing. So it's a most place, a most busy place for you to go. Uh -huh. And other town is named Punaka. Uh, it's about three hours drive from Timpu, mm -hmm. and it is the uh, like a Gyeongju. It is the old capital of Bhutan, and we have the um, the oldest and the most beautiful zong, uh, which is fortress uh, in Bhutan, uh -huh. named Punaka Zong, uh, with the two lovely uh, rivers mm -hmm. uh, cross by. And that's the, uh, all the foreigners, they visit Punaka Zong to experience the uh, heritage and culture, um, diversity mm -hmm. of Bhutan. Then the, uh, the last but not the least, the bottle. I mean, when you search like um, Bhutan on, on the Google, mm -hmm. you will see this like a nice, beautiful mountain uh, mon monastery uh -huh. hanging on the cliff, which is named the Tiger's Nest Monastery. Oh. Uh, that's reset in a place called the Baro Valley. Mm -hmm. So it's about like a three to four hours uh, trek mm -hmm. um, on foot. Wow. So yeah, you don't have to worry about falling down from the cliff. It's a very safe uh -huh. and it's, it's more than 1,000 year old meditation um, place, monastery for those, all those enlightened uh, masters from mm. Himalayas. All of the Himalayas have been to the Takzang Tiger's Nest Monastery to uh -huh. practice um, their meditation. It sounds amazing, all these locations. So they definitely are must-visit locations. And we ask you to all the viewers of Arirang um, on the occasion of 30 years of friendship between Bhutan and Korea. Uh, I would like to welcome all the viewers of Arirang to Bhutan and come and have a happy time in Bhutan. Thank you. Come Samida. From traditional ceremonies and performances to colorful traditional costumes, rediscover Bhutan, the country closest to the sky. This area was the capital of Bhutan for 300 years. On special days, Bhutanese people put on traditional clothes and go rafting at Punaka Jong. Now, I understand that, um, you know, as a Korean American, you worked as an M&A director for eight years on Wall Street. Mm -hmm. uh, also as an art fund manager for four years in Hong Kong and Beijing. So how did you come to represent Bhutan? Well, um, I love the country mm -hmm. um, very much. I was, um, I was educated in the, in the States and worked on Wall Street for eight years, like you said. So I was living in a, the most pioneering edge of the materialistic society. Then often I, I love to travel. Um, then I traveled to the Himalayas uh, when I was in college, when I was, in, uh, when I was having a job. And, and then I found Bhutan. I visited many Himalayan countries like Tibet, uh, Ladakh, Sikkim, Mustang, Nepal. Mm -hmm. But like uh, the Bhutan was kind of home to my spiritual um, path. Uh -huh. So it all started with my, my journey to the spiritual path, but now slowly it became um, my, um, my uh, responsibility, uh -huh. uh, like social responsibility to serve Bhutan, not only to serve Bhutan, to become a bridge between Bhutan and Korea. Uh -huh. So the Korean people who has the one of the, uh, not one of the, who has the highest suicidal rates in the world. Is that true? Which makes the yeah. unhappiest country in the world. And we have the um, highest uh, youth suicidal rates in mm -hmm. the world also. So if I can deliver the small message from Bhutan, the value of happiness to the Korean people, who thinks the happiness is very conditional, mm -hmm. but which is not. So then that will make my mission complete. So that's what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. And that's how I took the position as a chairman of the association and with or without title, mm -hmm. I look forward to keeping uh, serving to become a bridge between two countries. Mm -hmm. 
This week is Chuseok in Korea, which is very similar to Thanksgiving. And I'm wondering if there is a major holiday in Bhutan as well that's very similar to this major holiday, Chuseok mm. holiday. Yeah, I'm happy to be in Korea during Chuseok time. Uh -huh. um, last week, we mm -hmm. just passed it. We, uh, we had a, one of the biggest festivals in Bhutan named Timpu Chechu. Uh -huh. uh, Chechu means a festival. Mm. So that during that time, I was there, and during that time, our uh, His Majesty, the King, and also the royal family, and the, um, His Holiness Jack Kempo, mm -hmm. our the, um, the highest um, religious leader of Bhutan, and all those government officials, like prime ministers and ministers and mayors, and all those people, people who live in Timpu, we gather together mm -hmm. and we celebrate the um, Chechu. Uh, oh. festival. Mm -hmm. So we have the uh, huge um, um, paintings of the Guru Rinpoche, um, uh, Padmasambhava, um, the, the legendary king who brought the Buddhism mm -hmm. um, to Bhutan. And in front of that, everybody uh, enjoys the festival for the first couple of days. Uh -huh. And some people, they go back to their hometown, uh, mm. to the villages, to spend their time with the family, which is very similar to Chuseok yes. uh, in Korea. Because uh -huh, Thanksgiving in Chuseok, it's, it's all about spending time with family. That's right, yes. uh, And eating good food. You oh, know. yes. <laughs> so what are some um, you know, holiday traditions? As you mentioned, mm -hmm. people go back to their hometowns, to their home, you know, villages to mm -hmm. spend time with family. Mm -hmm. What kind of food do you have? Is there like, are there specific dishes that you enjoy during the festival period? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, we do have lots of dishes, uh, also by regions or, or so, oh, um, but our main uh, cuisine is called datsi. Mm -hmm. We use uh, cheese, yak Chee. cheese, uh -huh. and also chili. Uh, so we call it ema datsi, gyewa datsi, shamo datsi, uh, mm. which means like a cheese made with a chili, uh -huh. or a potato, or mushrooms. Mm. So, mm, yeah, yummy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which makes me quite hungry now. Uh, <laughs> really miss those food. Uh -huh. And we do have like a buckwheat uh, noodles uh -huh. uh, named puta. Mm. So those are food that we in, they are enjoyed by the family when we visit each other, um, also friends also, mm -hmm. uh, to their house and they would have some Natsi mm. or the Buta and also homemade liquor, like uh, we have Ara, uh -huh. uh, it's like a soju oh, uh, I see. of Bhutan uh -huh. and we have a Xinchang, mm. it's yeah, Bhutan, Bhutanese uh, makgeolli, oh. so made out of rice. Oh. So whenever you visit Jennifer, then I'll definitely make one dish for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I must go now. I've got so many reasons to visit Bhutan. Oh, yes. <laughs> Just hope they let me enter the country. Um, so we've talked about the similarities, uh, major Bhutanese holiday or festival. Mm -hmm. um, now, during Chuseok in Korea, it's it's very, it's customary to, I guess, exchange, um, you know, messages, you know, um, just wishing each other happiness and, and good luck throughout the mm -hmm. year, you know, health, good health. So maybe you could uh, deliver a message to our viewers that are watching, mm. take this opportunity to send out a message to them. Okay. Hello, all friends of Bhutan in Korea. Um, I would say uh, the true happiness. Uh, true happiness cannot come while others suffer. So the, in order to be really happy, then we all have to be happy. So today, we are spending time with our family, loved ones, friends, close ones. Uh, so I hope we can all learn how to be happy, how to tame our mind, how to make others happy. So in order to do so, uh, we should cultivate our minds with the true compassion and wisdom. So without others being happy, we cannot really happy. So that's the message I want to send for the Chuseok. Thank you. Well, thank you for the uh, very wonderful and sweet and uh, thoughtful message. You've mentioned happy several times, mm -hmm. and I think it's true. Uh, you can't be happy um, unless you make others happy. I think it makes, it, you know, it comes and goes, what comes and goes, and That's I think true. the same goes for happiness. Yes. I guess up until now, uh, Bhutan was thought of as a country that was very mysterious in a way. Um, it was a country just far away. People not, did not know much about the country, but I'm sure our viewers uh, that have watched today's program have really uh, 
had the opportunity to discover Bhutan. Mm -hmm. And we want to thank you once again for giving us the opportunity to find out more about Bhutan. And I would like to thank you once again for joining us and wish you the best of luck in everything you do in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you.